My name's Ian McCall. I'm one of the editors of the Skin Cancer College of Australia and New Zealand's dermatoscopy blog. And what I'd like to do today is just to show you uh, how the blog's set up and the type of cases that we in fact see. Now the blog's been running since 2005 and we've had a steadily increasing number of cases each year since then and now we have in fact uh, over 1,800 cases and over 6 gigabytes of information in fact in this blog. There's more than 6,000 images. It's the cumulative experience of these guys here. These are the editors. There's been 16 editors uh, in that time. We have 10 active editors at uh, any one time because an editor presents one day every two weeks so it keeps the workload uh, down to manageable proportions. There's quite a bit of work goes into producing uh, a post each day, but I'll go into these posts shortly. Let me just show you the rest of the uh, blog outline. We have a series of uh, links to sites that are of relevance to our members, including the International uh, Dermatoscopy Society and various other blogs that are educational and relate to uh, dermatoscopy. The Skin Cancer College of Australia and New Zealand runs a couple of diplomas. There's the Diploma in Dermoscopy that uh, we run that's been going now for about three years um, and is delivered over online over a 20-week period. There's the Dermatology Diploma that's run. Uh, it's delivered over 28 weeks and has been running for uh, three years now as well. In the blog, each post is given uh, a label and this allows you to go in later on and look up all the posts that have that particular diagnosis. So for instance, if you want to see our various posts here for amelanotic melanoma, you simply click on that and the posts will come up. Now often the posts in fact have more than one case in them, so you sometimes have to search down through the post to find the amelanotic melanoma. But this is one here that uh, I think from memory was in a 13 year old boy um, from Jean-Yves Gouin from Paris, France and uh, this was the clinical and this was the dermoscopy uh, image. A little bit of pigment, um, varying vessels, not your uh, typical melanoma by any stretch of the imagination but uh, and in a 13 year old boy as well. So it was good to get exposure to these. Not only do we have that, we often have the histology of the lesions as well. And so, uh, as you can see, the opportunity of spreading information, of sharing um, important cases is, uh, is, is very great. And that's what the blog's all about. Now, what I'll do now, I think, is just to show you some of the cases that we've looked at in the, uh, in the last week. Let me go down to the beginning of the, the week first. Um, that case came from Poland and it was presented though by one of our uh, editors here, Dr. Cliff Rosendahl. This little slide is probably the important thing. What this did was look at uh, the number of diagnosed invasive melanomas and look at the death rate that's associated with them per 100 new melanomas. Now in Australia, the death rate per 100 new melano invasive melanomas that are diagnosed, the death rate's uh, about 10. Uh, whereas if you look in Poland, the death rate's nearly 50%. So why is this happening? Well, basically here in Australia we pick up melanomas when they're very, very thin and where they can be cured by simple excision. Unfortunately in Poland um, the, the death rates due to melanomas not being diagnosed until uh, much later when they're much thicker and they're already spread. And Cliff is involved in an educational exercise to try and lift the awareness of melanoma in Poland. He and uh, Dr. Agata Bolinski from Poland are, are busy doing that uh, just now. So this is one of the advantages of this blog. It allows international cooperation. It allows us to look at uh, problems in other areas and we can offer some, our expertise here in Australia to uh, people uh, overseas. Now this was a case I presented on Tuesday. Um, a gentleman with 
significant solar damage in his back. Look at all this other solar damage down here. But we were looking at these lentiginous pigmented lesions uh, on his back. These were the three I was interested in. There's certainly another one there. But when we have a look at them, not only can we have the dermoscopy of uh, the lesion, and this was the one here, but we also have the histology um, of the lesion as well. And this was reported as uh, a dysplastic junctional lentiginous nevus. Now, to some of us, and from a practical point of view, that's essentially melanoma in situ. Uh, he, the middle one that he had was, uh, in fact, here you have uh, lines curved, and you've got gray dots scattered through this, indicating that this was regression within uh, a solar lentigo. And again, we have the histology of that uh, as well, with the typical, what they call dirty feet, um, increase in melanin and sometimes some uh, melanocytes at the base of the epidermis. So we're able to show the histology, we're able to discuss it uh, amongst us, and what you really have is a cumulative experience of 10 uh, authors who are taking the best of the cases that they're seeing and spreading them um, out via the blog to the 300 odd other people who have, uh, who have blog access. Access to our blog is in fact uh, limited because of the uh, medical nature of what we're presenting. We in fact have it by invitation only, it's not an open blog. Let me show you the last cases that we had for this week and then I'll show you how to get access to the blog. This uh, was a case, or two cases, that was presented from Tansville by Greg Canning. And here was a 36-year-old female who had several nevi, but had this one on her thigh as well. Um, here you've got this little atypical area that's come up. This was apparently due to trauma, this area here, when she was younger. She said the lesion was, in fact, unchanged. Um, this is the dermoscopy. To my mind, most of these were grouped clods and perhaps part of a congenital or compound nevus. This was the traumatized area. But then you had this area here um, as well. And when Greg looked at this quite closely, then whereas you have a clod pattern here, um, and Greg actually felt that there was perhaps some negative uh, network in here as well, some white lines in between. I wasn't quite so convinced, but you've got some brown dots here too, indicating that there's something else going on. And then you've got this uh, lines reticular with some lines radial peripheral um, in this small section here, and that would be enough to uh, worry you. There's some little gray dots in here too, suggesting that there's uh, some activity going on in this lesion. And in point of fact, when it was excised, even though the patient said this had been unchanged for years, um, it was an invasive melanoma. The second one is even more uh, interesting. This here is a speckled lentiginous nevus. Uh, the cafe background, the small uh, flat macular nevi that are superimposed in it. But then you've got this. Now looking at this on its own, I mean, uh, anyone would look at it and say, ah, that's, uh, that's a melanoma, there's no problems. But to get a melanoma in a speckled lentiginous nevus is really very uncommon. And in fact, when you looked at this, let me show you the, the dermoscopy elsewhere of this. There were a couple of other distracting features. Here, you've got these orange clods. Let me see if I can make these any bigger. You've got these orange clods here. Um, and often you'll see these in seborrheic keratosis. However, you've got some blue-gray structures. You've got your lines, uh, radial peripheral here as well. Um, and the overall appearance of this lesion just screamed melanoma. In point of fact, there were some little gray dots of uh, regression in uh, this in areas as well. Perhaps not as well shown in this, uh, in this image. But, of course, when this was excised, again, it was uh, an invasive melanoma. So, here, something I had never seen. I'd read about uh, melanoma and speckled lentiginous nevi, but I'd never seen one. Well, I have now. And that's the advantage of the blog, the opportunity to share amongst colleagues the interesting cases that you see. It expands everybody's 
um, education, it expands everybody's experience. So how do you get, oh, by the way, these are the other little things that we have uh, at the, in this blog as well. We have some educational video blogs that you can access. We have some YouTube blog videos that you can access as well. We give details of interesting journal articles that each of us see. We put them in here. Details of the diplomas that we run and the annual conference of uh, SCANS, which uh, this year I think will be in June um, on the on the Gold Coast. And uh, you're very welcome to uh, attend June 2011. It's going to be in the Gold Coast. And you can get your uh, access to it from SCANS. But let me show you how to get access, in fact, to the... Um, to the blog uh, or to scans itself, you would in fact go to, uh, let's do it here for you, www.sccanz.com.au And it'll take you to the um, website of the Skin Cancer College of Australia and New Zealand and from there you can get access to the uh, blog and to some of the other resources that uh, SCANS provides. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at uh, our blog. If you're interested in dermatoscopy, we'd be keen to have you as a member and you're very welcome to, uh, to access it and enjoy some of these uh, cases. Unfortunately, in Australia, we get to see lots and lots of melanomas. Um, so if you're in part of the world where you don't see it as much and you want to enlarge your experience, then by all means join us uh, on this blog. Thank you very much.